Hi, so in this lecture, we are going to talk about the failures associated with the nuclear power plants. Now, you must have heard a lot about uh, the accidents associated with the nuclear plants. And in fact, if you try to find out um, some information you want to get from the Internet, you will typically find specific case studies hmm, associated with these accidents. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to give you a general idea of what could cause these accidents. So some of these things have already happened and some of these things could happen if we are not careful enough. So these are not case studies, but general idea of what can cause failures. So let me quickly remind you, I know that you know, but let me uh, tell you again that the nuclear power plant is nothing but a thermal power plant. It's nothing but a steam power plant. Why? Because the, the turbine blades are, are running because of the steam. Hmm. However, the heat that is used for generating the steam, that is coming from the nuclear fission rather than a fossil fuel. Hmm. So you must have seen some of these really big towers, hmm, some little steam coming out of these towers near the nuclear power plants. Well, these towers are simply water cooling towers. They are optional and they have nothing to do with the fact that whether or not it is a nuclear power plant. It can also be present for a coal based power plant hmm, because this is just so that some of the water is circulated back into the rivers if the plant is close to a river or a, or a source of water. And since we don't want to send the very hot water back, sometimes it is cooled down hmm, by spraying and that is done in the cooling towers. So these are just water cooling towers. Hmm. Okay. Is there any difference in the turbine blade design? Because is it very similar to the steam power plant, other, uh, you know, coal power plant, or is there a difference? The answer is the volume flow of steam in the case of nuclear power plants is much higher and hence the blades need to have more surface area. The blades need to be longer. Hmm? However, these blades rotate at a relatively lower speeds. Hmm? Also, the purity of the steam is low compared to what we have in the steam power plant. Why? Because um, there is some water droplets mixed in the steam. It is a low temperature steam. Hmm. It is also called the wet steam sometimes. So now I will not go into the details of the manufacturing defects or the thermal fatigue of the steam uh, of the blades of the steam turbine because that we have covered in a in a different lecture. We will talk about the problems that are very specific to nuclear reactors. Okay, so you remember how do we insert the fuel in our nuclear reactor? We make pallets. We mix the nuclear fuel with certain ceramics. Hmm. Now, sometimes we can also have the ceramic made out of the fuel itself. For example, uranium dioxide can be used. Hmm. So commonly used fuels are uranium, plutonium and thorium. In India, especially, we have a lot of thorium based plants. So now you prepare these kind of pallets and then you stack one pallet on top of each other and like that you make long rods. Hmm. Then you take several such rods, make a bundle of such rods. That is what goes into the nuclear reactor. Now where do these rods go? Of course, the place where the reaction is taking place has to be really strong. Hmm. So the chamber or the vessel where the fuel goes where the, actually the primary reaction take place, which is known as the core region. Mm. That is made of very strong steel reinforced concrete walls. Mm. What else? It also has a very heavy lid on top. This, this lid can actually weigh a good couple of tons. Mm. So a very heavy lid on. And it, in addition to that, you also have the control rods, not just the fuel rods, but also the control rods. So as the name suggests, these rods are there to control the reaction. So they are made of certain materials which can absorb the neutrons. And we also have the steam generator inside the chamber itself. And in the case of pressurized water reactors, we also have pressurizers. There are different coils, there are different valves and so on. So all of this is inside this really strong containment vessel. Okay, so as I already mentioned, the fuel is 
mixed with ceramics now some of some types of ceramics are also used for uh, for the disposal of radioactive waste or the storage of radioactive waste and all of these ceramics together are sometimes called nuclear ceramics so if you are further interested you can read about the nuclear ceramics control rods they are made of materials like boron cadmium silver indium these materials can absorb neutrons of different energies depending upon their neutron capture cross section so you will typically use a mixture of these metals and make the control rods out of them okay so coming to the failures hmm the primary failures can can be divided one is the design faults when we talk about the design faults well it can be the rod design it can also be rod design in manufacture for example if you uh, somehow make your rod in such a way that you end up having certain cracks in the rod hmm or the material say uranium is not well distributed in the rod in that case you can have a failure later on hmm similarly if you have um there are so many valves and sensors in this system if you have a faulty valve or if you have a sensor that is not giving the proper output hmm so for example certain light or certain alarm needs to turn on when your pressure is lower than a certain limit if that alarm is not working or the light is not working that can lead to lead to disasters hmm so these are all they come under the design faults equipment failure when i say equipment failure i mean if the maintenance is not done properly and here i am also including the maintenance of the steam turbine itself you can also have the turbine and generator failures because so it has nothing to do with the nuclear reaction however this may lead to a shutdown of the overall system and a sudden shutdown can be very dangerous in the case of nuclear power plant not so much in the case of other power plants so maintenance is not there then that can lead to certain equipment failures now maintenance is also required for smaller things like uh, you know you have to check the battery of your sensors you have to check multiple things usually you will have multiple sensors if one fails the other works but still a regular maintenance is required also maintenance is required for the fuel rods you may have to also change the fuel rods you may have to change the control rods um you know after certain period of time so all of this comes under equipment failure when it is not done properly and the last one is the human error you will be surprised to know that uh, most of the accidents most of the nuclear power plant accidents are caused by the human error because there are not so many people who are trained in operating uh, on the nuclear power plants and also sometimes people end up panicking if some little thing goes wrong then people end up pressing the wrong buttons which has indeed happened this kind of failure can also uh lead to a lot of disasters okay now we talk about some accidents hmm not i will again not talk about any specific cases but the causes that have led to accidents in the past ha huh. so you can have wrong materials used in the rods in one certain accident the caps of the rods were made out of graphite hmm now why is it wrong graphite is used as a moderator material which actually slows down the neutrons it is in fact called the cooling of the neutrons and cooling you will think that cooling is a good thing right so why is it so bad in the case of neutrons cooling is not a good thing what cooling cooling or slowing down the neutron means that you actually make them better for a for the next fission reaction it's the very fast neutrons that do not participate in the fission they leave the material hmm but it is the slower ones that lead to the chain reaction hmm that that propagate the chain reaction so these graphite rod caps hmm can actually create more fission especially in the case of you know um if you want to shut down the plant or something uh, has already gone wrong in that case if you have graphite rod caps they can lead to um you know increase in the reaction rate rather than slowing them down okay now if you have the fuel rods that are damaged as i already mentioned cracks and then cracks can lead to local overheating of the rods which can 
uh, lead to further damage. Hmm. You may have the uh, problem of the control rod maintenance. Hmm. During the maintenance, there can be issues. For example, in one certain case, the rod was removed too fast. Hmm. That could also create, uh, you know, a problem or the change the rate of reaction when it comes to uh, the overall rate of production of steam can be changed and so on. Hmm. Sometimes if the rod is remo removed too far out, the control rod is removed too far out, that can also be an issue. There can be air contamination when you remove the rod. So all of these things are issues that can take place at the time of maintenance. Now, one accident was also caused by the change of, uh, uh, you know, ventilation. There was some problem with the ventilation system or sometimes there are problems associated with the pressure system or typically the sensor or the reading is, is not correct. So these things have, have caused problems in the past. Okay, now when one of these things happens what is actually the result what do we actually see what what really causes the failure that is basically always the uncontrolled reaction so whenever the reaction is we are not able to control the reaction then it can lead to explosion we know that uh, nuclear reactions can be can can take place really really fast so you will have tremendous increase in the reactor power within a few seconds then that that totally goes out of hands so what can that uh, increased power do well it can cause the fuel to vaporize because of overheating the fuel rods can swell up if there is too much heat generated inside there can be explosion of steam hmm. because of this your lift can uh, your lid can lift up hmm. and once the lid is out then you have all the contamination into the environment you may have the cooling water also going outside you may have the cooling water vaporizing and then that can also lead to steam explosion you can have the leakage of the contaminated materials outside you can have the hydrogen oxygen explosion as well so at the end of the day all of these problems and maybe some more can can take place you know in the future if i hope nothing happens but if there is any future accident we might end up seeing some other problems associated with this explosion of steam hmm. so the primary cause of nuclear reactor failure is the uncontrolled reaction which can be due to design faults equipment faults bad maintenance and human error